Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Now, I just want to tell you, I got like a little pre-Easter speech here. It's not going to take me long. But if you just say a couple of amens like you did last time, we can be out of here. And you can go on home and, and you can watch the rest of the Lady Game Cock be whoever they're going to beat today. Amen. <laughs> As you go with me to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Thank you, Deke, for reading the um, portion of Scripture on today. Thank you so much for that. I want to just lift up mm, verse... 31, if that's okay on today. Verse 31, Isaiah 40, verse 31. And I just want to lift up the A clause. That's all right. And it says this, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. That's all I got. Amen. Amen. That the Spirit should allow for just a few more for a few moments, I would like to preach from this subject. I think we all can agree with. I'm tired. I'm tired. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Father, the songs have been sung. The blessings and the prayers have been lifted up. Now, Father, touch this your man's ever hide me behind yonder's cross. That they will never see me. God will see the God which resides in me. For you art the potter, I am but the clay. Shape, make it mold me right now into that which you desire for me to be, that I may be an instrument of your use on this day to preach the word of God to these your people. Father, at the end of it, we will count it all joy. But in the midst of it, Father, we still will give your name the praise because you are worthy. For all these blessings we ask in your name, we pray. The people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. Um, tired. Lord have mercy. I'm tired. I think I'm in good company today to say that we all know what it feels like to be tired. We know what it feels like to be physically tired when we've done so much to our bodies that we've exerted so much energy that the body is fatigued, the body is worn down, the body needs rest. Our body tells us when we've done too much, we get aches and pains. We become what we call thirsty, where the hypothalamus gland tells the brain that we need, we need a beverage, something like water or something else to replenish our body. That lets us know that we are tired. But not only are we physically tired at times, but sometimes we are mentally tired. Mental, mental, when we are mentally tired, it means that we've done so much thinking, done so much on our brain outside of the normal use and normal capacity of what we do that now we are mentally tired to the point that where we can't take in anything else, nor can we pour anything else out. And we find ourselves putting our hands in the we put our head in our hands and we look down and we don't want to hear the TV, we don't want to hear the radio, we don't want to hear conversation. We just want to close our eyes and turn off all the voices that are in our head. But not only is there mental tired, not only is there physical tired, but there also is something called spiritual tiredness. Y'all are going to help me this morning. Spiritual tiredness is when we've done the same thing over and over again, only to find that nothing has really changed in our life because we say we love God, but yet we don't do the things to show that we love God. Y'all are going to help me. That, that we do good and we do good and we do good, but only thing, we, only thing that seems to come up is, is things never seem to get right. Church folk never seem to act right. Our neighbors always seem to be cantankerous. And at the end of the day, we are spiritually tired because we know that God has brought us from a mighty long way, but yet where is God when we think we need him most? I think I'm in good company today when I say, y'all, I'm just tired. I'm tired of digging but not getting any deeper. Y'all, I'm tired of, of always giving up the right for the wrong. Y'all, y'all I'm tired because, because it seems like no matter how much I do, it's always something or someone somewhere that's never happy or pleased by what's going on in my life. But not only am I tired of me, I'm also sometimes tired of them. Y'all are going to help me. I get tired of them always lying on my name. I get tired of them always, always talking about what they're talking about. I get tired of them uh, saying that they're my friend, but yet only uh, to be like the old Jesus say that they're, they're backstabbers. They smile on your face, but still trying to take your place. Y'all are gonna help me this morning. Y'all, sometimes we just get tired, but 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 can we be honest? And this is for the real folk this morning. I need to know do I got some real folk in Ebenezer that when I say this, you won't pack up your Bible and close it and go home. But not only am I tired of me, not only am I tired of them. 
But sometimes I get tired of him. Y'all didn't help me. Because even if I hadn't had to follow him, I could say what I wanted to say. I could tell you to call. Don't, don't call me. Don't text me. Don't, don't, don't Facebook me. Don't tweet me. Don't do it. I can actually give them a piece of my mind and my vocabulary. But because I follow him, I, I got to learn how to bite my tongue. I got to learn how to give up the right for the wrong. I, and y'all, at the end of the day, I'm just tired. But what do you do, Ebenezer? When you're tired, but you want an agenda for the Almighty. What do you do, Ebenezer, when you're tired and you want to send in your resolve, uh, recant and recall? Uh, you want to throw in the towel. What, 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 what is it that you, well, what do you do whenever it seems like every time, every time you roll the dice and come up snake eyes? Y'all didn't help me. What do you do when all you really want to do is just serve the Lord with gladness. What do you do when, when, when all you want to do is go to church and not have no drama? Y'all ain't gonna help me. What do you do when you go to work and you ain't got to deal with tricky co-workers? Y'all ain't gonna help me right now. What do you do when, when you want to not be tired but you're sick and tired of being sick and tired? But I'm glad you asked because there's some helpful and holy hints from the text on today. Uh, Isaiah begins uh, to put pen to parchment. And as he puts pen to parchment, he, he, he pins uh, what I call one of the most iconic statements in the holy ritual. Uh, he, he comes off, he says, first of all, he says in Isaiah chapter 40, he starts off by telling us, uh, have you not known? In case you forgot. Huh? Have you not heard? Uh, in case you didn't know that the Lord is everlasting. That the God, the creator of the ends of the earth, that he does not faint, uh, nor does he grow weary. Uh, his understanding is unsearchable. Uh, he gives power to the faint and strength to the powerless. That even young people will faint and be weary, and, and, and the young uh, will fall and be exhausted. But, but those that wait on the Lord, y'all have mercy, uh, they shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up on wings like eagles. Uh, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Uh, that's a very iconic statement uh, that's made, that the, excuse me, that uh, Isaiah writes. Uh, but as we break it down, we see he gives us the recipe uh, to, of what to do whenever we get tired. The first thing, the first thing the text teaches is that when we get tired, uh, we've got to get some revelation. In other words, uh, we got to understand why it is that we're tired. Sometimes we get tired because we repeat the same thing that we did before, expecting a different result. Einstein says that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing, expecting the same result. Uh, but we are creatures of habit, uh, every last one of us. Uh, we have things that we do every single day. It does not matter if it rains, it does not matter if the sun comes out, if it's hot, if it's cold. Uh, it does not matter. We do the same thing every day. But we hope that what we do today will be different than what we did yesterday. But sometimes you just get tired. Get tired of taking medication. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Get tired of going to doctor's appointments. Get tired of, of, of having to, to, to go outside and prime the car before you crank it. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Get tired of, 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 your, of your buff being longer than your money. Get tired of going to the same job, uh, working all those hours, but yet huh, getting paid less and less every year. Lord have mercy. But we've got to get revelation. And the revelation in the text here is that you, we must first understand that God is everlasting. In other words, what, 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 what Isaiah is trying to get us to understand is that, is that the God that we serve is, is bigger than our temporary tiredness. That the tired state that we're in is only temporary and that we've got to learn that God sees past all of this moment, but he sees all the moments. Uh, uh, I like to use this analogy. Uh, if you've ever watched the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, you will be, as you see it go by the screen, they talk about each and every float, each and every group that comes by. But every now and again, as they go to commercial, uh, they will show what's called the blimp view. Y'all had a mercy. Uh, and, and what the blimp shows us, it, it shows us the entire uh, route for the 
the parade. Uh, it shows us the beginning as well as the end. Uh, we get it as we only thing we see at ground level uh, is one flow after the next. Uh, our vision is limited. Uh, our revelation is limited. Uh, but God sees it from the blip view. Uh, God sees it from the beginning as well as the end. Uh, that's why he says I'm the Alpha and the Omega. He is ever lasting huh? and then just in case you don't think he's everlasting huh? he reminds us by saying that he is the creator of the ends of the earth huh? it was God and Jesus that stepped out onto nothing huh? and called it to something and said let there be light huh? and the light became huh? and the darkness could not comprehend the light and then they looked around and said let's make us a world huh? they made the world and they said it is good he is the creator because he's everlasting. Uh, and when we get to the revelation that everything that we deal with on this side uh, is only temporary. Uh, can I think the apostle Paul said it this way. Uh, he said, he said, don't let the present troubles of this time uh, catch you up uh, because there's a greater weight and glory on the other side. Uh, but we've got to deal with the stuff on this side uh, to get the joy on the other side. Says, you got to get revelation. You got to get understanding uh, that, that this is only temporary. That this shall not last always. Y'all, uh, that, that, that's why I don't get bent out of shape about a whole lot of stuff no more. You know, having a heart attack, it will, it will teach you that, that you can't stress out about everything. Some things are out of my control. Some things I can't do nothing about. So I said, Lord, here it is. It's yours. I'll just sit back and I'll watch the salvation of the Lord. Because if I trust him the way I say I trust him, I don't got to worry about losing no sleep. Because he never sleeps nor slumbers. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. He says, look, he gives... He gives, he does not, he does not faint nor grow weary because it's temporary. <laughs> His understanding is unsearchable. That's why we need revelation. But at, as we get revelation, he then gives us power. <laughs> and he strengthens the powerless. How does he give me power if I'm tired? Well, isn't it amazing how once you start looking at a situation differently, your mindset changes. So what was what stressing you is no longer stressing you, but you sit back and you say, you know what, Lord, this too shall pass. But here it is. Here it is. I, I like this part, huh? Because, because he said this. He says, now, this ain't just for old folk, but this for young folk too. Now, old and young, you put that however you want to put that. Some of y'all are still young in your age, and some of you may think you're older, but I'm not getting in that. That's however you see yourself. That's what you are. And I'm going to keep on looking forward because I don't want to make eye contact with nobody. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Lord, help me. He said, but even you, in other words, even those who think they're strong, they got to get revelation. And the reason they got to get revelation is because just because you're strong don't mean you don't get tired. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Not only must we get revelation, but the second thing text teaches is that we must learn to get elevation. <laughs> here it is. He says, uh, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hmm. Uh, but those who wait on the Lord. If I'm going to get elevation, we've got to learn and we've got to come to the commonality in the place where we realize that to get elevation takes time and that there are some points in there where we must wait. I love this. I love this. I love this because because when this is written in the original um, 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 Hebrew text, I, our weight was not the word that was used. The word that was used was really preeminero. In other words, we get our word 
permanent from. Uh, and what it means is not just that we're waiting in, spe- in expectation, but it means that we must give a Barak while we are waiting. In other words, uh, we must give him praise uh, while we are waiting. In other words, uh, that while I'm waiting on God to do what he's going to do, uh, I've got to wait on the Lord with my praises. I think some of you missed me. Let me see if I can help you here. Uh, not only must I wait in expectation for him to move, uh, but there are also moments uh, where I have to stand and give service as a waiter or a waitress uh, while I'm waiting on him uh, to move in my life. Uh, in other words, uh, I've got to serve the Lord with gladness. Uh, I've got to do some work while I'm waiting on him to move uh, because it keeps my mind off of what's ahead of me, but it allows me to do what God requires of me so that God can move in my life. Let me see if I can help you this way, Ebenezer. While, let me see if I can say this way. While I'm watching, uh, God is waiting. And while God's waiting, uh, I'm working. Y'all missed it. Let me help you one more time. Uh, While the haters are watching, uh, I'm working. uh, And while I'm working, uh, God is, excuse me, excuse me. And and while I'm I'm, I'm waiting on God, uh, God is working. Uh, Let me put it the other way. God is working uh, while I'm waiting and serving him. uh, And my haters are just going to watch. The same way you saw me fall. uh, The same way you watch me get exhausted. The same way you're watching me fail. uh, Watch how God uh, will show up uh, and show out in my life. uh, Do I got anybody get here uh, that God has showed up in your life uh, where everybody cutting you out God says I got more for you says you gotta wait (laughs) on the Lord Lord have mercy I I feel like preaching a little bit here 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 it is here it is Uh, uh, but not only are we waiting but after we wait this baffled me. Brother, he didn't say he going to give me new strength. He said he going to give me renewed strength. In other words, <laughs> I still have some strength. I just need God to renew it. We don't want a new church. We just want God to renew the one we already have. Y'all that can help me here. I don't want a new wife. I don't need a new husband. I, I just want him to renew the one I already have. Y'all gonna help me out. I, I don't need new kids. I, I just need God to renew the ones I already have. I, I don't need a new job. I, I just need him to renew the one I already have. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Y'all. <laughs> but now this is the part that blessed me. Because when you get to elevation, he uses this analogy of eagles. And it's interesting he would use eagles because he says that they shall mount up on wings like eagles. Uh, the anatomy of an eagle. Y'all sit down. Y'all, y'all, y'all sit down. Sit down. Sit down. So I got a little bit more to teach y'all. Y'all, they trying to push me, Lord. He used this analogy of eagles. And it's interesting because this analogy of eagles is one that shows strength and majesty. Eagles are the birds of the heavens. Uh, eagles are, are different than most birds because most birds do what's called um, shedding. Uh, they shed the feathers that are in their wings only. So after a while, an old bird can't fly like a new bird. But eagles are very different. Huh? Eagles do something called molting. Y'all, it's, I'm trying to give y'all a little bit of science here. Right? And, and, and the molting means that, that they don't just shed feathers in their wings. Huh? They shed feathers in their entire body. And once they shed those feathers, huh, they get rid of what's called the dead weight. Huh? And the same old eagle huh, can now fly like a brand new eagle huh? because he let some stuff go. Huh? And I'm just trying to let somebody know today huh, that if you you want to get to the next level uh, if you want God to elevate you uh, you've got to shed some stuff uh, not just in one area but you've got to let God shed some stuff out of your entire life uh, so you can get to the next level the problem is is this is that we got eagles hanging out with pigeons and forgot that they're eagles Lord have mercy we got eagles hanging out with crows uh, and forgot that they ain't crows but they really eagles. Uh, and the one thing I love about eagles is that eagles can get up to 30,000 feet. Y'all gonna help me right now. And when you get up that high, the air get real thin. 
but the but the thin of the air get the struggle the eagle gets. Huh? And I'm just here to let somebody know that if you get the right elevation with God, huh? God will take you to some places huh? in some rare air huh? where ain't nobody else at, huh? and you can fly by yourself. I'm almost done. But as I go to my seat, I got one more point I want to give you as I go to my seat. I've held you too long already. And y'all going to push me anyway, so I might as well go ahead and end it. Not only must we get revelation and elevation, but we also must learn to get determination. Here it is in the text. It's right here. It says that after your mind up on wings like eagles, it says you shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. The interesting part about that is that there are going to be some things in this life that you're going to have to build up the determination that come hella high water, I'm still going to stand for the Lord. I'm going to trust him no matter what. I'm going to believe what his word says. I know what it looks like on the outside, but I believe what God told me. He said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. And so because he said that, I've got to believe that. He said, lo, I'm with you until the end of time. And so i got to believe that. He said that I'll be a way maker for you. But you got to trust him and his word. Can I just tell you, there's some things you can't run through. You can't run through cancer. <laughs> you got to walk through that. Y'all can help me. You can't run through diabetes. You got to walk through that. Huh? You, can't, you can't run through a heart attack. Huh? You got to walk through that. Huh? You can't run through a divorce. Huh? You got to walk through that. And you got to have the determination. Huh? To stay, yeah, you know what y'all hadn't got. Let me see if I can help you here. Let me let, let, let me see if I can give you an additional. Now you can take this home with you. I didn't even mean on saying this part, but go with me real quick to Galatians six, mm-hmm. six and nine, huh. because I, I want you to see uh, why you need determination. Uh, uh, D- D- I'm sorry, I, I know this off the script, but but I, but but the Holy Spirit just dropped me on me. Uh, uh, Paul says this in his letter to the Galatians in, in his in six nine and ten. He said, "So let us not grow weary in doing well, doing what is right. For if we reap at the harvest and we do not give up, so then whatever we have an opportunity, let us work for good." All especially to those in the household of faith. Uh, in other words, in other words, what God, what, what he's trying to tell us is that you ought not grow weary in doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, you ought to keep on uh, trusting him. Uh, and that takes determination. Uh, because here is the thing. Uh, several seasons may pass uh, and it may not be your harvest. Uh, but the one thing I am convinced about this uh, is that after a while, uh, my harvest is on the way. Uh, and when God shows up, uh, that's when I know uh, it's my time, uh, and, but you got to be determined uh, to be steadfast, uh, unmovable, uh, always uh, abiding in the work of the Lord. I got a friend down in Florida who left his corporate job and bought an orange grove in Florida. A few years ago, they had a bad orange crop because... They thought that we had what was called a false spring, where for about four weeks the weather had gotten hot, but then freezing temperatures swept down, even in Florida, and it killed the crop. He said the lesson that he learned from that was this, is that whenever the season for picking is here, that's when we're going to pick them. And I just need to let somebody know if you didn't catch it, uh, that it may not look like it's your season. Uh, it may not feel like it's your season. Uh, but when the harvest is ready, uh, you got to start picking, baby. Uh, you got to start plucking and picking uh, because you never know what may come. Uh, but you got to have the determination. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. But as I go to my seat, I think I need to let you know this. That... Jesus shows us the epitome of why we need revelation, elevation, and determination. He shows us in a few short 48 hours why we need revelation. 
He realizes while he's in the garden of Gethsemane that his time has come. And he asked his father, he said, Father, if it's thy will, let this cup pass from me. But he said, but if it is not your will, I, then let me drink <laughs> what's in the cup. That's revelation. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Huh? Then uh, a few short hours later, uh, his, his blood matted body <laughs> is, is being stretched wide and, and is being hung high. But I'm reminded of what he said. He said, if I be lifted up, <laughs> I'll draw all men unto me. Uh, that's elevation. Uh. But if that wasn't good enough, uh, he gave, shows us what determination looks like. Uh, because the Bible would say uh, that on the third day, uh, he got up with all power in his hands. Uh, why do you say that shows determination, Reverend? Uh, well, I'm going to tell you why. Because he told us uh, that three days later, uh, he would get back up. Uh, and he got up uh, and said, I've got all power in my hand. Uh, do I got anybody in here uh, that's ready to get some revelation? Uh, ready to get some elevation? Uh, ready to get some determination? Uh, because you just tired. Uh, but don't be tired and don't be weary. Uh, I've heard the lightning. Whew. I've heard the thunder roll. Uh, I've seen the lightning flash. Uh, I felt some that breakers dashing uh, upon my soul. Uh, but I heard the Lord say, uh, come unto me. Uh, come and keep on fighting. I'm tired. So are you. But I'm trusting him. I'm trusting him. As you stand to our feet. I know you are. Life is life, which means it's getting difficult. Can I say, like the young kids say, it's hard out here in these streets. <laughs> That's what they say. It's rough. It's tough. Got a government that's losing their mind day by day. We got schools that are doing the best they can, but yet not getting what they need because of political agendas. I'm going to go ahead and say it. You, you, know, you ain't got to invite me back. I, I'm out to go and just say it the way I need to say it. And you tired. Send your children to school. But they're getting everything but an education. They get an education, but it's not the kind of education that you sent them to school for. But not only that, just not schools. You tired because you come into church. You gotta deal with the same old cantankerous people each and every week. No growth, no movement. Just happy with being steadfast. But I learned this, that the more you stay, that's when you start to die. You're tired. Your body is betraying you. It's giving up on you. You're taking a medication for this, but you another medication to offset the medication that you're taking for that. Say amen. It's all right. Eyes are getting dimmer. Steps are getting shorter. And you're tired. But I just want to tell you, there's somebody who can see about all these things. And his name is Jesus. If you don't know Christ in the part of your sin, this is your opportunity today to come. And as you come, I ask that you come knowing that God can do all things but fail. He is a faithful God. He's a loving God. But Romans says it this way, that if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, then you are saved. Believe that he died for your sins. Believe that he hung on a cross. Believe that he got up on the third day. But they hear it. But you got to confess that I'm a sinner. But I want to be saved by grace. And can I tell you, each and everybody in here, can I say that we are sinners saved by grace? Today is your day. All you have to do is come. All you have to do is come right now. But before you come, make up in your mind, confess to him that you want to be saved and watch how he will transform your life.
say, Pastor, I'm already saved. But like so many of us, day by day, we have fallen short of the glory of God. But I love what the Bible says. It says, I'm married to the backslider. Like that prodigal son's father who waited side the road waiting for his son to come every day. Wasn't sure if he was coming or going. But one day he saw him from afar. And he told the servants, my son that was once dead has now come back. He was lost, but he came back. Kill the fatted calf, bring the best robes, and let me restore him. That's what God says to us. You can never fall so far that God can't come back and rescue you. Nothing is too bad that God cannot bring you back from. But you got to trust him. Someone may need prayer today. If you need prayer, if you want to stand the gap for somebody, this is your opportunity. As a choir, sing the song suitable for invitation.